Welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast, where your host, Josh Sweeney, will give you, the business leaders, HR professionals, and company culture aficionados, the knowledge you need to take your company culture to the next level. Hello, my name is Josh Sweeney, and welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast. This is season three, which is all about retention, and I'm joined here by my co-host, Crystal Sweeney. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Before we get started, we'd like to thank Prototype Prime for this amazing podcasting space. So the topic of today is work rewards and incentives. So we do a lot of work around understanding work rewards, how to incentivize people based on their specific personality traits. So Crystal, could you give us a little bit of an overview about what work rewards are, how they're different from you know the, the other ways that people incentivize? Just give us a little overview. Oh yes, uh, I absolutely find it fascinating um, just discovering individuals' work rewards. Uh, they are very different um, as far as, you know, there are people who are, you know, more relationship driven. There are people who are more, you know, results driven and their work rewards kind of fall right in line with that. Um, so, you know, in the discovery process, it really resonates with people when we do uh, when we do the assessments and they see what their top five work rewards are. Um, and then we're able to take those work rewards. We put it in a survey and we reach out to them on a monthly basis and say, hey, these are your work rewards how how are we doing um, in, in providing those rewards to you? Do you feel like you're being rewarded? Uh, and then from there, you're able to make adjustments uh, to kind of accommodate that in your culture. Yeah, the thing I'm loving about the work rewards is it's extremely specific to their personality, as you yes. mentioned. So, you know, a lot of people do these one-off incentive plans and they say, okay, we're gonna incentivize, incentivize everybody. And it's normally incentivize and rewarding them in the way that the manager would want to be incentivized. And what we actually have found is through a lot of assessments and testing, behavior analytics, all these other uh, psychology testing and, and things that we're into and studying is that there's about 17 unique work rewards. And most people, if you ask them what their work reward is, other than money, you know, which is kind of the fallback, they, they can't really answer it. Yeah, not. I mean, I when my work awards when I got my results, uh, none of the verbiage that was given to me would have ever crossed my mind. But it just it made sense, and it was like, yeah, that's absolutely what I'm looking for uh, in a work environment. So um, it's definitely unique. Uh, I also think it's interesting uh, how managers can actually use that to uh, sort of strategically place their employees where they need them. Uh, just as an example, uh, a work reward that we have is um, a leadership position. And if that's something that shows up in somebody's work reward, then that's a great opportunity for managers and you know leadership within the organization to be able to reach out to that person and possibly you know grow them and move them into some somebody they need. Yeah, and there's actually personality traits that you know uncover that they want to be in a leadership position. And if they're stuck in a frontline position for a long time and they're not getting that satisfied, then that's going to decrease retention. Um, you know, that employee is not going to stick around for a long time because that's part of who they are. That upward right. momentum. Right. Um, and I like what you said earlier about the verbiage. You know, you didn't you didn't know the verbiage of your work rewards, and I think that's a big part of. A lot of what we do is giving people vocabulary to really discuss what they're feeling. Like, how do you turn into, how do you turn something like, well, I kind of feel like I want this and this mm -hmm. into a set of vocabulary that everybody can can really understand and, and know about? Absolutely. Now that I know some of my work rewards in, in the future, it's like if I'm going into a, play, a place of business, I know what I'm looking for or I know what environment that best suits me. And so, you know, it's, it's setting myself up for success in the future as well. So, I mean, I think it's, it's absolutely spot on a great way to get to know yourself and what you look for. Yeah. So other than a leadership position, which is one of our 17 unique work rewards, what's another work reward that comes up a lot? that people may not, you know, may not think about. Yeah, so uh, I'll share one of mine that came up that would have never crossed my mind, and it's work tranquility. Uh, you know, that's something that, uh, especially in an entrepreneur, small business venture, you know, a, a startup or whatever, you know, work tranquility may not be what somebody would think about. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just a work that I wouldn't, a word I would not put with 
with describing work at all. I mean, I just, that's more of a, you know, go out for a workout or a meditation or uh, do a yoga session. And that's where tranquility comes in. But when I start looking in, what does that mean for me? Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, having a work environment that's free of conflict or, you know, pr- minimal in conflict, um, safe work environment. Um, it's just a, a peaceful place to be. And, you know, when actually reflecting upon that, it is very important to me because if I'm in an environment where it's there is a lot of conflict or, you know, things are always loud and noisy, then I may get overwhelmed or bogged down and I'm not going to be as productive as I could be. Yeah, I know one that came up the other day that we were really digging into was intellectual stimulation. Right. So so that was uh, interesting to put that verbiage around a work reward because you don't you don't normally walk up to somebody and say, you know, other than money, what kind of rewards would you like? What kind of incentives? And they're like, oh, well, I need more intellectual stimulation. Right. Um, you know, it's just not the vocabulary we normally use. And it was really interesting to dig into, you know, what does that work reward mean? What does it mean to be intellectually stimulated and how does that play into the retention of the role because if that person needs it as a personality trait and doesn't get it then that's going to lead to more turnover they're going to go find some other role where they can get that stimulation and get that level of thinking right and i actually struggled with that one with coming up with what does that mean to somebody because it is it is not anywhere in my work rewards or vocabulary so just as as an individual looking at that going, I, I, I can't grasp that concept. What does that mean? You know, I'm, intellectual stimulation, you know, may mean something to me where it may be something different to you. And and that's something that, that the managers, when looking at these work rewards, needs to, you know, get an understanding of what that means. You know, it, it's if, it, if you don't know what that means, talk to your employee and say, hey, this showed up in your work rewards. What does that look like for you? And then it, that gives, you know, that educates the manager so they, they better know the person and they right. know, you know, what, what else, how can we fill that need for them um, to where they are more happy in their work position? Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, the managers have to know each individual's, you know, traits, their personality, what they need in order to, to grow in that position and into that organization. And we're leaning further and further in that direction just with technology, the knowledge that we have. We're seeing one-off tailored plans and tailored information to each individual or specific person or groups of people because at the end of the day, yes, there's 17 different unique work rewards, but when you look at uh, businesses as a group of 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, there's only 17, so you get trends. You're able to come up with unique plans for each one of those groups and implement work rewards that identify with them. Well, and and doing a a deeper dive into those work rewards too, a lot of the things that you can implement in your company culture kind of satisfies multiple different work rewards. Um, You know, the having an educational platform set up in your business uh, can help with work rewards like personal growth, uh, could be intellectual stimulation, uh, could be career progression. So, you know, there's not a, you don't have to implement 17 different things in your business to satisfy all of them because there are things you can do um, that that cover multiple, multiple of them. Yeah. And you're probably already doing things that Right. that focus on different ones, but now it just has to be measured and make sure that you're scoring high on those work rewards for retention, employee retention purposes. Which is where those surveys come in. Definitely. Awesome. Well, if you need to look at your work rewards a little deeper, you want to understand how to reward and incentivize people based on their behavior, take a look at our website, look at the work rewards, or look at the personality assessments and other information that you have on hand to really dive down into each one of your individual employees or colleagues. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Epic Company Culture Podcast with Josh Sweeney. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. For additional content and transcripts, visit epicculture.co. If you have questions or topics you would like us to address or expand on, tweet us at epicculture1 or email at podcast at epicculture.co.